Malika here for Peak Survival. We're doing a huge series on bug out bags, also known as 72 hour bags, or some of you might know them as get home bags, whatever you like to call them. They're essential for emergency situations and evacuations. So we're gonna go through the array of items that you should have in these bags. And uh, we're gonna go in more detail in another video on each of these categories, but we're just gonna do a quick overview and end the video with the actual bug out bag options. So the first category, clothing. You wanna factor layering. You don't know what kind of weather you're gonna be encountering. So layers is really important to have air between the layers, which will create added insulation. You wanna have things with Gore-Tex or water repellent. You wanna Gore-Tex your bottom as well to make sure that everything is waterproof. You wanna have backups to things. So don't just have one pair of trousers, one top. You wanna to have multiples. You wanna have, uh, depending on it, what situation you are, if it's a mountainous region, maybe you might need some poles or if someone in the family has an injury, uh, consider hiking poles. Uh, gloves, obviously keep your hands warm. Socks to keep your feet warm, hats. Uh, we have a ghillie suit here. Um, so if you're in a situation where maybe you need to blend in with your environment, um, we're gonna review that. Mosquito nets, shoes. Shoes, imperative that when you buy a pair of hiking boots that you wear them well in advance. You don't wanna have a fresh pair in there and then you're just breaking them in during this situation. It's gonna be very uncomfortable. You're gonna have lots of blisters it's going to slow you down. So this is a really quick overview of clothing, but we will do more detail in another video. Hydration. You need water. There's only so long you can survive without water. There are different ways. You can do sterilization pens. You can do filtration pumps, purification tablets. Um, you can do, obviously, packs are already ready of emergency drinking water, water bottles. So there's just a little quick overview of what we will be discussing but we'll go in greater detail on how to use the different techniques. Obviously you have your tools, your gadgets, uh, hand saws, trowels, knives, weaponry. There's a lot to cover here. So we'll go in greater details into the pros and cons of each. Obviously, depending on whether you're gonna be doing lightweight temporary evacuation scenario or more long-term, um, you'll have to consider what items you're gonna bring with you. Uh, we're gonna cover as well items to have in your vehicle in case of emergency, because obviously you've bugged out, um, but you may need a vehicle and uh, we're gonna review items that you need in the car. On this side, we have first aid kits and medical supplies. Uh, obviously this is a, um, a key thing to have with you. Uh, we just don't know what we're gonna encounter. We're gonna go in great detail as to exactly what you need to carry in your first aid kit, from lightweight options to heavier options with greater equipment in it. Torches, lighting, head torches, handheld. We're gonna go through it all, pros and cons of each. Lighting sticks, we have power packs, you need backups to everything, batteries, power packs. Uh, over here, we're gonna have a discussion about um, maps, how to use a compass, how to keep your mind going. You, wanna, you may not know everything, that's the key thing. We're gonna teach you as much as we can through our videos, but in an emergency situation, a lot of the information we've obviously imparted to you may not stick. So pack a few of these and you can refresh and also learn new skills that could save you and your loved one's lives. Over here, one of my favorites, fire, cooking. This will keep you healthy and strong. I'm gonna teach you lots of different ways of using um, fire. Obviously there's different techniques to creating fire. We'll go through that. I have done videos in the past, um, so you can always visit those links as to how to use the different items. Toiletries, um, pack towels, one-time use towels, toilet paper, you wanna pack your usuals. Um, you wanna do self-care, you wanna take care of yourself, you wanna feel good. And even though you're in an emergency situation, it doesn't mean you have to be uncomfortable. Uh, we'll go in greater detail about that. Uh, right, so we have made our way to sort of snares, emergency lights, uh, reflectors, foil blankets, 
we're going to go into that as well in the next video. So, uh, right in front of me here, uh, in your bug out bag, you want to consider air mats. We've just done a detailed video about air mats. Um, I like to have a little luxury item, which is an air pillow. It's up to you to decide if you want to carry that extra weight. Uh, extra gear, we've got some waterproofs. Uh, we have the, the ba waterproof bags, which we've done a video about as well. And then obviously, incredibly important shelter options from lightweight to more luxurious, comfortable options. Again, we've uh, covered that, so just look at the link below. So let's go visit the bug out bags or 72 hour bags or whatever you want to call them, get, a, get home bag. Let's clarify what these are. Um, anyone that spend time outdoors will know the importance of these, especially when it comes to weight. Um, we have lighter options here. Um, we're we're going to go in greater detail about the features and how much they can carry. Now, something that's important to consider is obviously the lighter they are, the more comfortable they'll be. Um, but you have to factor if it's super lightweight, um, something like this can be the difference between life and death, comfort, and being slowed down. Now, most of these are not to live for six months or longer out in your situation. They're more designed for emergency situations. So anywhere between 72 hours to a couple of days. Um, you want to be able to have your bag, grab it, go to your safe location. And what you need to factor is the compromise between weight and practicality. Now, some of you may know this, may not know this, but human beings can actually carry up to 25% of their body weight. Uh, but that's actually a little bit on the high end. Um, things to factor obviously are how old are you, the fitness level, your geography, the terrain. So if you're gonna be in a mountainous region with lots of terrain variation, uh, you may not wanna have something that's incredibly bulky and heavy and is gonna slow you down. You'll probably wanna consider something that's quite uh, resilient, but lighter. So we have over here the Osprey Raven, which is a six liter bag. Uh, this one I use generally uh, for a quick day hike or whatnot. Uh, so you do have enough compartments to put first aid kit, uh, extra socks, hydration pack, hydration packs through here. There's extra storage in there as well. Incredibly lightweight, lots of pockets, so easy to organize things. You have uh, air mesh here for airflow, so you're comfortable. And like I said, it's lightweight, it's, it's comfortable material. So it's practical, but it is limited in terms of how much you can put in this. Uh, you have something smaller. So let's say you're just doing a couple of hours out. Um, you can just put your bare necessities in there. This could be like an, a lightweight option. So when we're going to review all the items that you can put in a lightweight pack, you'll see how small items can be. And you can actually surprisingly fit quite a few things. This is also handy if maybe you have a, a younger child. They may not be as strong and carry heavier packs. So if you have them have a little, you know, bag ready, that's, uh, that's quite handy. Now we have uh, the off Osprey Perigee. Uh, now this one weighs 24, this can actually have capacity for 24 liters. Um, again, you have lots of compartments. This is bigger than obviously the other Osprey had besides. So this has a lot more space. You have again, dividers. You can put uh, lots of gear in there. You can put your water pack. You have added padding for comfort. Uh, both in the, the, the back torso area. Um, but again, it's a bit limited in terms of size. I would probably go a little bit bigger if we're going for a longer duration. We have the, uh, the red Osprey here, and uh, that's a little bit bigger than the six liter, obviously, that I had just shown you. Um, this one, again, lightweight, great material, uh, very sturdy too. Lots of compartment options in there. Um, and you have the mesh backing, which is great for keeping cool. You have added sort of clips here. 
uh, side storage, which the other ones had as well. A bit of controversy around the military grade packs. Now, I've seen videos opposed to these, and I understand, obviously, these are made for durability. Uh, they're not necessarily built for comfort um, versus the commercial bags and lighter options. Um, I think what a lot of people talk about is the gray man concept, which is essentially you don't necessarily want to look like an experienced military personnel and become a target. Uh, because you look credible and people around you might start thinking, wait a minute, this girl or guy knows what they're doing. They probably have a lot of supplies and you might become a target and people start taking things from you. Uh, but that being said, I mean, you have a good amount of compartments. You have a lot more space. Um, and like I said, it's built for durability. So it's going to be tough. This one's pretty good. You have extra padding, both on the straps and on the back. So I'm not opposed to this. The next one is a little bit bulkier and bigger. This one has a lot more storage. So you can have your first aid kit on the side or some tools and weapons and ammo, depending on what the situation is. You have a, a better feature here with the draw cord and a bit of waterproofing. Um, Something I will say about this is obviously you want to review what kind of emergency situation you are in and how you want to use your bug out bag. Um, concealment is often essential. You might want to blend in with your environment. For instance, if it's a societal collapse or it's martial law or there's an evasion capture scenario, in that situation, Blending in and having camo print on your clothing, on your bag, could be the difference between life and death. So these are considerations in terms of selecting your bag. I want it noted, do not buy the bag before you know what kit you have. Because you find yourself buying these great bags. You go, oh, that's lightweight. I love that feature. It's beautiful. And then you look at, oh, your kit, and you go, oh, gosh darn it. It doesn't fit. So first, it's important to do what I've done here is you lay out your kit. Pack it as tightly as you can, as efficiently as you can, and then see, does it all fit? So I have lots of different options for different scenarios, but I've seen it before where someone goes, oh, I got my nice bag, and then they can't fit half of their things in it. So figure out what you have, then select the bag. Um, over here, we have uh, the nice black options. So this one over here is a 30 liter military day sack. I oh, know, sorry, that's a black hold all bag. So that's a 50 liter, sorry, um, which is great to have in your car. You have optional straps. If you wanna carry it as a, a backpack, um, which are hidden. So you can either use it as a backpack here. I'll show you. I haven't zipped it, but you can wear it as a backpack or just carry it with the handle. Now, because it's 50 liters, you have a lot more capacity. There's a lot more flexibility here. You have the, you have the mole straps. You have uh, the carry straps. It's quite durable, lots of compartments. So even if you're not that organized, this helps you become organized. Uh, you can put your clothing in one, your first kit. I mean, there's, there's just a lot of options here. So 50 liters can, you know, get quite a bit in there. Um, so the 30 liter one is actually over, over here, the black one behind me. So this one, there we go. You have some padding on the back, so you have some comfort. Um, straps, again, loads of storage. It uh, has a, a waterproofing on the inside, a bit of a PVC. So that's quite useful actually compared to the others, which I think you probably would have to do uh, a Niclax spray treatment to them. So yeah, a good amount of space in there. And again, the side pockets added storage. I do like that. You can put a first aid kit that's easily accessible. Um, over 
here we have the 511. Now, a few of you have mentioned you love this brand. Uh, it's really, really smart design. Now, the 511 bug out bag it has really good organizing features. Uh, there's lots of compartmentalization in there. Uh, even if you're not that organized, it will help you be organized. There's a hydration pack in the back, and uh, it's not necessarily the, the comfiest, but you can fit loads more in here. I like being organized. Um, I love packing and sorting things out. So a 511 for me, is, it is at the moment one of my favorites. Of course, like anything, feel free to um, post some of your favorites and I'm happy to try to get my hands on some and, and do additional videos on other bug out bag options. But look at this, I mean, it just keeps on going. More storage, more storage. Let's have a look at the back. So it's, it's tougher, so it's quite durable, uh, but in terms of the comfort, uh, you might just, it might be a bit stiff, but there is padding, so that's good for, you know, a good 72 hours or longer. And there's extra storage back here too, so you can put your water pack or maps, or I mean, this just ticks all the boxes, really. Um, I have these over here. These are just generic storage bags. So let's say you've decided to go with a simpler bag. Uh, with not very many compartments, that's okay. You can get something like this, which has those added compartments, and you can just put it in your bag. So that's an easy solution. Uh, and now let's go to the big kahuna, which is our big Osprey 85 liter bag. Now this is maybe overkill for a one day situation. Um, this is actually the one that my partner used when we we're hiking for three months. So, you know, these can go up to 100 liters, but uh, this 85 actually kept us going for a really long time. Uh, this is better for long distance packing or trekking. You're gone for an extended period of time. Uh, it is definitely out of all of these, more designed for comfort. It has even low distribution. Uh, it has the air mesh backing over here. You have a lot more support and sturdier design but it is you know lightweight the padding here is just everything is so well thought out and designed i mean we wore our packs for hours i think we hiked from 6 a.m to 6 p.m nearly every day for three months and i mean these just were so comfortable considering the weight we were carrying um in terms of compartments this is detachable, so again, if you wanted to lose some weight, you could take it off, or you can wear it as a, a bum bag. Um, and you have loads of storage in here. More on the underneath, on the front here. Inside, I mean, right now I've just had a sleeping bag, but I mean, we had our camping stove. We had two items of each clothing from socks to hats to trousers and tops and jackets in here. We had everything we needed to live for, you know, a good three months in this pack. And then I had a slightly smaller one. And between us, two packs like this could keep you well for up to three months. But usually we're talking about bug out bags, talking grab, grab and go real quick. There we go. Stay there. So that's a general overview of bug out bags. We will go into greater detail into each category of the EPCs you're gonna need, everyday carries, and also the kit that you're gonna to need to put into your bags. So stay tuned for those videos.